Dear friends, it's a privilege to talk to you. In this series of lectures, I hope to give you a very detailed introduction to Christian apologetics. Now you may ask whether Christian apologetics is related to apologizing for the Christian faith. Not at all. Apologetics comes from a word which means argument or reasoning. The correct word is reasoning. The English word apology has a totally different meaning compared to the Greek word apologia which means giving a reason. And the word apologetics comes from the Greek word apologia. There is a particular reason why I love apologetics. And there is a particular reason why I devoted myself to study and teach apologetics. And there is a particular reason why I would like to introduce Christian apologetics to you. Let us start from the last reason. I would like to introduce you to Christian apologetics because Christian apologetics is a subject that takes a little bit of learning. It needs a little bit of learning. It has its own tools. It has its own vocabulary. And it's always good if a subject of this nature is taught by a teacher who is already taught and experienced and who already has many years of experience. That's the reason why I would love to teach you Christian apologetics in a series of lectures. The second reason why I studied apologetics. I studied Christian apologetics because a time came in my life when I passed through a lot of doubts. Let me mix point one and two and share it with you. I was born in a Christian family, a very God-fearing Christian family. At a very early age, I accepted Lord Jesus as my personal savior. It was my own father who shared the gospel with me based upon John 3, 16. And with full awareness that I am a sinner, I accepted Lord at that early stage or at that early age, became a born again believer. My greatest interest right from childhood was to become a scientist and therefore I used to read anything and everything on which I could lay my hands. When I was in the fifth standard, I was reading textbooks of the eighth standard. When I was in the eighth standard, I was reading textbooks of BSc. And when I was in school senior years, I was reading textbooks meant for MSc students. That was my kind of love for the world of knowledge and the world of science. And believe me, I understood all those books well and enjoyed them. But there was a problem. Almost all science books are written from the perspective of the theory of evolution. So the more I read, the more the evolutionary foundation of those books, they kept working in my mind. Remember, ideas have consequences. Every year I used to read hundreds of books, science books, and each one of those books kept on hammering upon brain this idea that man is a product of spontaneous evolution, a product of natural evolution in which God has nothing to do. In fact, evolution denies the existence of God. By the time I came to the ninth standard, I had very serious doubts about the Bible. All that history recorded in Genesis and the doctrine of creation. And by the time I came to the 10th standard, I had strong doubts about the reliability of the Bible itself because if you cannot believe Genesis, how can you believe the rest of the books which depend upon Genesis or which are closely linked with Genesis? If one link is weak or if one link is broken, what is the guarantee that the chain would be intact or that the chain is strong? I passed through a lot of 
anxiety. Deep inside my heart, I was a born again believer. But on the other side, all what I read forced me to question and doubt everything that the Bible told me. By the time I was in the school year, school senior years, I started praying, Lord, if creation is right, if you are real, if Bible is a reliable book, then help me to discover it. Please allow me to study these things. And please tell me which side I should take, what should I believe. Then, when I was in BSc first year, I spotted a book by the name of Bible and Modern Science. It was written by the late Dr. Henry M. Morris. A book imported from USA. I wanted to buy it in 1971 and remember this, the India of 1971 was not affluent. And a book imported from USA was very costly from Indian standards. I kept on looking at that book with great yearning, but I did not have enough money to buy it. Then that Christian brother who was a shop assistant in that Christian bookshop came to me and asked me, Johnson, what's the problem? I said, uncle, I would like to buy this book. I feel that I urgently need it. I feel that the book can help me, but I don't have enough money. He said, okay, give me what you have. I pulled out all the money that I had to the last coin. He counted all that and he said, yes, this is uh, incomplete. In fact, this would hardly cover half of the cost, but don't worry, my boy. From your facial expression, I realize that you badly need this book. I'll pay the rest. That's my gift to you. Friends, other than salvation, this brother's gift was one of the greatest gifts that I ever received in my life. With great joy, I took that book home, started reading it, and right from the first page, I realized that it was Lord's doing that I spotted that book and that this brother presented me with that book. By the time I was halfway through the book, I realized that there is no conflict between Bible and science. I realize that there are a lot of theories in science, but a conflict between a theory of science and the statement of Bible is not to be taken as a real conflict because a theory does not represent an unchanging truth. Rather, it represents something that might be revised, changed, or even rejected tomorrow. That was the first step in my restoration. That was the first time I realized that books like this do exist. And from that time onward, I kept on hunting for books. Eventually, I discovered that such books fall into a category of theology known as apologetics. I became a great fan of apologetics. I devoted myself to study apologetics. Any and every book on apologetics which I could find, somehow or other, I obtained it, kept on reading. And that was the time when I realized that those who know need to help those who do not know because there are many who do not know. They are passing through very, very serious doubt which is creating a kind of schism in their life and which is leading them into a backslidden state. That's the time when I said, Lord, my greatest desire is to become a scientist, but I am ready to become whatever you ask me to do. My only desire and my only plea to you is Help me to become an expert in Christian apologetics. 
so that i can help thousands upon thousands of young people who struggle the way i struggled till yesterday because i did not have information all what i had was one sided propaganda i have become normal in my spiritual life because someone showed me the other side allow me to do that in my life the lord was gracious i kept on studying that subject for almost 14 years yes 14 14 years before all the questions in my mind all the major questions were answered but many many years before these major questions were answered i realized that answers are there only thing you have to look for the answers in the right place and once i found these answers i have to share that with others so even before those 14 years i started sharing these things with young people and i was i was thrilled i was delighted to see the change which apologetics brought to the lives of these young people after those 14 years i started writing of course i started writing much before but after these 14 years i started writing according to a syllabus i developed a correspondence course on bible and science and bible and evolution sent it free to thousands of people and the response that came from me moved touch my heart i realized how these things have been touching young people then i wrote an entire syllabus i first of all developed the syllabus and expanded it that me, that is made up of tools of apologetics that is made of up of discussion related to bible and science bible and apologetics a bible and evolution bible and archaeology numerous other subjects i would like to share these things in a video format with all of you in the coming days there is a definite purpose number 1 if you are a young person like me young or old who has doubts related to the reliability of the scripture or the christian faith i would like to help you to regain your your faith two if you are a person who desires to help others you might not have any doubts but you might want to help others then i would like to give you tools using which you can help others three you might be a person who from time to time or frequently has to answer skeptics while i urge you not to waste your time with skeptics because they have decided that they are not going to believe in spite of proof yet there are a few noble souls among them who are true seekers it's your duty and it's my obligation to help those true seekers so that from skepticism they might be able to come back to truth come let's study christian apologetics for our own benefit for helping others and also to help those skeptics those those that minority among skeptics who are true enquirers and by doing all this let us glorify god because first peter 4:10 says be ye ready to give an answer to those who ask you concerning those who ask for a reason concerning your faith we do that with the help of christian apologetics and in the coming days we shall take up a large number of tools a large number of information related to christian apologetics so that you you are strengthened in faith so that i feel happy that i am doing what the lord has asked me to do and so that we might be able to help thousands upon thousands of people god bless you and in case if you enjoyed this introduction let me remind you that all these lectures shall be uploaded to youtube uh, they shall also be made available to interested people on dvds all what you need to do is contact me god bless you